Well, hello, good evening. Good evening, everybody. This is Joel and Sherilyn here. We are live and um, we're just coming to hang out with you tonight. Tonight, we're going to have a, a conversation. And tonight, I, I'm going to say what I used to always say. Tonight, we're going to be brief. <laughs> right? Can that I make, means it's going to be very long. Can guys. I make that promise? Right? <laughs> tonight, we're going to be brief. Um, <laughs> but we really just want to have this conversation with you. Um, because we know how um, important this one is. And um, we want to talk about the benefits of, um, of unity in marriage. And some of us are going to be um, surprised by some of the things we talk about um, that are benefits. Um, but it's important for us to understand how important unity is. Um, so jump on in. Jump on in and hang out with us. And let's have some fun. But um, also, let's 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 get an opportunity to learn tonight. So, Sherilyn, anything you want to talk about? We thank you guys for on? again um, for joining us tonight. What we do is a passion of ours to see um, families heal, unified, growing together in the pro in the promises and the blessings that God, only God could provide. Um, we are passionate about seeing uh, that people not only enjoy their marriages or enjoy each other, but have a family life that is so rich that they can experience a heaven here on earth as Jesus promised. And so we thank you for joining us. Again, we are not experts. <laughs> we, um, we are just testimonies to the word of God that ring through in our lives and because of it we have a, a incredible marriage we have a beautiful family that is beyond our wildest um, imagination and so what God has done for us we would like uh, to share what we've experienced over the years uh, for Joel and myself being together for 29 years and we are 43 years old and so um, you know that did not come with uh with ease but it did come with a lot of trials tribulations and um, misunderstandings confusion heartaches but in all of it uh jesus was there and jesus led us and helped us and we just want to share with you guys some truths some laws some principles that if you we wholeheartedly believe that if you or know these laws and live these laws you'll see it transform your life so thank you for joining us tonight it won't be boring but it'll be powerful i guarantee you that this insight that joel and i are about to share with you can and will help you once you believe and apply them to your life absolutely absolutely so come on in and let's talk about this because um some of you are going to be surprised as to how unity can can change your life and not just change your life, but change the generations um, that are coming out of you, out of your, 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 your unit, your, your, your marriage, and those that are connected to you. So um, that is a powerful, powerful blessing. Now, I want to um, refer us to one of my favorite scriptures. And um, one of my favorite scriptures is found in um, Amos chapter 3, verse 3. And it says, can two walk together? unless they agree and some some translations some translations say unless they be agreed mm -hmm. and so unity gives you the ability to to walk um lock step yeah. lock step together Sherilyn you remember the talk we did I think it's the first time you and I got on social media and did a live and we talked about being equally yoked mm -hmm. and the benefits of being equally yoked when that scripture says um when it talks about um, two walking together unless they can two walk together unless they agree. It's it's asking a rhetorical question, and the fact of the matter is, two people cannot walk together if they don't agree. And um, what walking together looks like, and what being unequally yoked looks like, is um, is us really trying to do something that's pretty much impossible. Um, trying to do something that's pretty much impossible. The word yoke. Um, in in biblical sense is talking about um, a device that was used on animals back in the days before before we had like uh, farming equipment mm -hmm. the farm equipment was two cows and a wooden device that they would put over the, the neck of the two cows to make them go in the same direction and if that device was not um, 
properly hitched on the necks of the two animals or if one animal was short or a young calf and one was an older um, bull and you put that device on the two of them it's gonna be it's gonna be bad actually what's gonna happen is when they put that wooden device on the the calf and the bull because of the difference in their size one of them is gonna get choked to death one of them is going to get hurt or one of them is going to struggle to walk because guess why they're they're unequally yoked so whenever um, farmers used to um, get two animals together to yoke them together with that wooden device so that they can pull the plows they made sure that those two animals were pretty much the same size and they had the same abilities basically um, they had to be pretty even in their abilities and their size before they yoke them together because if not one of them was going to hurt the other one and that's what usually happens in our relationships when we're not um, evenly or equally yoked what happens is we hurt each other in the process we hurt each other in the process because there's so much um, differences in our thinking um, there's so many differences in our value system um, there's so many differences in the things that we believe so much, that um, um, that when we are when we're yoked together um, unevenly like that we begin to hurt each other we hurt each other sometimes physically um, we hurt each other sometimes emotionally and and that's where I think a lot of the struggle comes from we we, we get hurt emotionally a lot um, because it's such and mentally because it's such a struggle to go in the same direction with someone that doesn't believe like you and to go in the same direction with someone that just has a completely different value system than you do and so tonight we want to talk about um, we want to talk about the importance of unity um, in your marriage so that you're not hurt so that you're not consistently losing hope in the future um, just because of the fact that you, 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 you're you on two different pages. Amen? Right. And unity is so powerful because without it in, in a married, marital situation with husband and wife, there are several things that affect us. A lot of us, we do not know. Uh, we're going through such issues in our, in, our, in our household. And because we have just done marriage uh, as usual, like traditionally we've done what our parents and ancestors have always done, who may not have uh, understand, un understood or implemented principles the principles of marriage for example there's broken families um, that's as a result of two not being unified in Christ not being unified in the principles of, of, of marriage and when we're not together you have broken families you have um, undisciplined children you get people that are, the children could be out of control in their behavior you know anxiety divorce stress depression unexplained illnesses like cancer for example a number one big one migraines mental breakdowns unhappiness in the family abuse and addictions you know infidelity in marriages suicide and fornication in teenagers in teens so you 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 all these things can be a, a result or issues that stems from not being unified as a couple we've seen lots of fam, um, relationships where uh, couples wear as a badge disunity <laughs> not being together on things fighting just to fight but it's it's really tearing them apart but they they try to make it a normal way of action and their ch their children are looking at them you know mom and dad are always competing they're fight always fighting you know it brings such an instability takes away security for the children in the home um, they start to disrespect one or both parents it's hard to really discipline them because they don't trust you you know there's such so much inconsistency because you think about it if you're looking to you know you look into like a, a government or a leader to be able to that is leading let's say your job if they they're constantly making decisions that are are 
confusing they're not on the same page you know they're one one uh, manager make this decision and tell you to do this and then another one tells you to do this now you're if afraid of losing your job so these post people have power to make you lose your job so who do I listen to you're confused and then you're stressed and then there's anxiety and then you're overwhelmed and you don't enjoy maybe a job that you knew you wouldn't enjoy doing so the same thing in the mar in the family you know if mom and dad are constantly fighting bickering they're not agreeing on 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 things uh, that you call the children come to them with it creates this insecurity in the child the child um, learns how to manipulate well and when they're manipulating they're gonna do the same habits outside the house so they will go out the house and they might be bullying other children or trying to manipulate situations just so they can feel accepted because rejection also could be something when when both parents are going at each other constantly and they think it's a fun thing and the child can't come safely to both parents to put, provide that ham umbrella of security for them and so there's so many things that this unity in a in a marriage in a, in a relationship can affect not only um we see wives unhappy because you know she wants to bring something to her um, husband concerning um, maybe her health or the children or you know things that she's feeling inadequate about um, that we all go through. But her husband is not the person that she can go to because he doesn't provide that security. You know, he jokes about everything. He don't take things seriously or he just tell her to get over it or he's constantly trying to fix her situation. And um, also um, the same thing with vice versa. So when they come together, there's no, there's no goals together you know she's gonna now go out and buy, shop to make herself feel well because when people people deal with pain different ways there's three different ways a person deal with pain they're either motivating it medicating it or um meditating on it so if you have spouse that is um medicating pain uh because they can't really you know see eye to eye and stuff you know it brings breaks unity they can't the, that couple will not be able to make goals set goals together they won't be able to be on the same page when it comes to parenting they won't be on the same page um concerning finances so if there's a breakdown there's depression there is um confusion there's heartache that's going on when both of them cannot even communicate with one another absolutely absolutely so um we really have to uh zone in on on how important um, unity is because there is um, there is a, a certain level of of intimacy that you lose mm -hmm. when there is disunity in your relationship. Um, one of the pillars um, of intimacy is um, is having common goals. Mm -hmm. um, common goals in some relationship is the thing that holds the relationship together in the beginning um, when we don't really have anything else going for us. Um, for example, you know, we know many um, couples that had a business together. Whether the business was, you know, a corporate type business or it was something that they were doing that was in ministry. That was the only thing that they had in common and the relationship that they had was kind of dysfunctional, but because they had this one thing that they agreed on, it kept them on fire long enough mm -hmm. until, you know, God intervened in some way, shape or form and helped them to begin to really work on the relationship. And so why am I highlighting this? Many of us, including Sherilyn and I, didn't know or didn't start our relationship with um, principles of God that we knew up front that um, were supposed to be implemented. We didn't go and get premarital counseling. Um, we didn't have couples or older couples that was mentoring us from the get go. So we kind of jumped into marriage with our own um, understanding and some false expectations as to how it was going to work but the one thing that kept us going was that we were unified around um, a specific goal and for Sherilyn and I was uh, right out the gate we had um, a business together 
right? We had a business together, but thank God <laughs> within that business that we were building, um, we had some couples that actually understood these principles of having a successful marriage. So the fact that we had business goals and we were, um, we were chasing after those goals and then we had children together, that was another common goal and we wanted our children to succeed and we wanted the best for them. And so we dreamed about a future for them. These common goals kept us in the game, so to speak, while we were malfunctioning in other ways. But the fact of the matter is that the benefit to us having unity in the area of our goals kept us um, engaged and kept us talking until we realized that there's more that we needed to learn and more that we needed to understand. Um, even when Cheryl and I started having children, we still didn't have it all together, right? But our children saw the fact that we were engaged with one another, pursuing common goals. And so those things kept us, um, that kept us so unified um, for a period of time. Uh, um, but there's more. We need more to make our relationships get to the next level. But the bottom line is that you at least need to have something that you're unified around. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we were unified around was that we were in unity in the area of God being important or God needing to be a priority in our life, right? And I'm telling you this much, the more things um, you're unified about, mm -hmm. the, the, the greater the chances that you are going to survive, mm -hmm. right? The more things you're agreeing on, the greater the chances that you're going to survive. Now, we were talking to someone recently and I was trying to explain to them that being equally yoked doesn't just mean that, oh, you know, I'm a Christian, you're a Christian, so we're good. Being equally yoked has to be looked at from every angle. Yes, if we, if we both have the same um, belief system in terms of our faith, that's important. You know, if Sherilyn, if I was a, a believer and Sherilyn was an atheist, it would be difficult for us to build something um, significant. If I was one, you know, I was a Buddhist and Sherilyn's a Christian, that would be a difficult situation to try and work through. So the fact of the matter is, yes, if you're a believer and you're married to a believer, that's awesome um, because you have, um, you have unity around your faith right so 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 you can grow in that area so there's so many different aspects of being equally yoked and being unified that has to be looked at how do you what are what are your value systems on raising children are you unified around that right because if you're unified around that then guess what you won't fall prey to things like manipulation by children I don't care how awesome your children are. Sherilyn and I count our blessings because we believe our children are awesome, but they're not perfect. And if they see disunity between me and Sherilyn, their children, from the time they're little, for some reason, it's like they come with this ability to play one parent against the other parent. So if they see this unity in us, um, when it comes to how we, how we um, think about raising children, um, they're gonna exploit that disunity. If Sherilyn is is a focused, disciplined parent and I'm just, you know, I'm just over here like, oh, don't bother the kids. Come on. Why are you so serious with the children? Leave them kids alone. Let them have fun. What's going to happen when because we don't have unity about how we approach raising them, they're going to exploit the fact that, OK, dad is the loose one in this situation. Mom's the serious one. So we're going to run to dad when it comes to us getting our way and we know that we're gonna win. And of course, that's gonna put a strain on my intimacy with Sherilyn and hers with me um, because of the fact that we're not unified. So the benefits of being unified is that it is one of the pillars of you guys building intimacy and ultimately having the level of um, trust in, 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 in one another's ability um, to be mature about how things are being done. Um, consistency is something that builds trust, 
right? And when I say trust, we talked about putting our trust in God, but consistency is something that people can, can, can count on. Consistency speaks to our character, right? Consistency speaks to our character. And when we're unified in every aspect of our lives, how do we manage our money? What are the priorities for us when it comes to money, right? You know, what are, we, what are our goals for, these, for this season? You know, are we unified around our goals for this season of our life? Like every little thing that we have to face as a, a, a husband and a wife, we have to look and see if we're unified about it. And if we are, you know, it, 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 it speaks to how intimate um, we are and how intimate we're going to be in terms of our emotions and so on and so forth. So um, that's, that's really, really important to understand. Before I keep running on, I don't know if you want to chime in on anything about that. Well, one of the things that, um, that helped us build a, a strong marriage is unity. From the get-go, the jump in our marriage, Joel and I always are on the same page. So despite how um, dysfunctional we were, we were always the main things. Majority of the time, we were on the same page. Even if I didn't agree with some things that Joel was doing, um, and uh, more me, because if Joel didn't, didn't agree with what I was doing, he let me know. <laughs> but um, we, we all, my, my, our goal was always to be on the same page, especially in myself in the beginning. I just didn't, I wanted to, to have peace. So I looked at what helped me was not just, we talked about trust last week, last week. Who do you put your trust in? Because Joel is human, you know, or your spouse is human. A lot of times we can't put, we cannot put our, we, well, we shouldn't put our trust, as we spoke about yet last week, in our spouses. Because, again, they're not perfect and they're human. You put it in trust, in trusting God. How, what does that look like? It looks like obeying the word of God. Because God and his word are one. If you want to see God and know his will for your marriage and your life, you look into his word. So, in terms of unity, um, the scripture, the Bible tells us how important and why unity is so important. There is a scripture that everybody that is a believer usually here in church and it comes from Deuteronomy I mean, sorry, Genesis eleven six. it says, The Lord said, If as one people, speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they can plan to do will be impossible for them. This speaks to, spoke to the Tower of Babel. Everybody knows the story of the Tower of Babel when the people, all the people in the earth spoke one language and they were building this tower to reach the heavens. And God himself said, you know, unless I do something about this, they, they, they're going to achieve their goal because of the unity. And so this tells us that the principle that unity is power. There is such power in unity and um, unity gives us not only power, it gives us strength um, in, 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 in our lives. So Genesis eleven six says that and then Deuteronomy 32 and 30 says, um, how should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousands to flight? Basically, it's telling us the power that once we are unified in the thing, in, in what we're doing, it doesn't matter because unity is power, is a principle. So if we're unified in doing evil as a couple, we will succeed. If we're unified in doing what is right, we will succeed. So as long as we're unified, as long as we know what we want, the unity gives us the power to be able to accomplish that. So unity, um, you be and your spouse being on the same page is much more powerful. It doesn't matter if what you're doing is correct or not, because there's a lot of decisions that Joel and I was unified for in, in the past, and we did. They weren't really the best things for us, but we unified together and we had some success. Um, uh, success even to the point where we saw that it didn't work. And that's a success because we know that when we when we did it and we didn't see the success that we were looking for, it yield us some kind of anxiety we know that we don't have we, we shouldn't do this anymore so we learn together as a couple in that area and then Ecclesiastes 4 and 12 says though one be though, though one may be overpowered by another 
though one of you may be overpowered by another this speaks to you know what if i'm going out there and i have goals by myself this um outside of my husband you know i might be working hard and i might be empowered by the world or people around me my parents family close friends telling me that i'll succeed in this business and i'm going forward with this business and it's not approved by my you know my husband's not the same page it's just my thing i'm doing on the side and it's taken away from his time and the children's time but i have this vision and and, uh, and everyone else outside of my husband is encouraging me. It says, the, this scripture says, though one may empower, um, be empowered by another, two can withstand him. And a three core, um, three four cord is not uh, quickly broken. So you know what? If two, if if I'm going doing stuff by myself. Um, this, uh, outside of my husband, you know, what would be more powerful is if the two of us would were on the same page doing this thing together. So are we on the same page on, on, on the decisions that we're making? Now, even if my husband is not into what I'm doing, but he says, you know what, this is what my, my wife loves and I'm going to support her. Guess what? I will see success because again, mm -hmm. the two just came in agreement. And if my husband is doing something that he loves doing and I'm I'm like, you know, in agreement because it brings him such satisfaction and I support him, then he will have success. It could be that he continued and, and, and maybe I'm thinking that, you know what, this is not a good idea. However, the best way and the quickest way to to, to get the result of whether it's a right you are right or not is by letting him do it and support him and as he go through him he himself may say you know what hun this is not working I'm not getting the satisfaction that I'm looking for maybe you were right and all you did in your chast behavior as for um as far as first Peter 3 says you know you win his heart over just just by obeying um the the law of unity you you're not um, together, but this alleviates fight, stress, or him not having feeling that you're not there for him and having this tug and so on. And you save yourself a lot of anxiety as well, knowing that your trust is in God, that, you know, if Holy Spirit told you that this wouldn't work, you just trust God, you pray for him, but you still support him. And in time, you'll see the manifestation um, of what it, it would, 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 would eventually come about. And then, of course, I was talking about unity is strength. It may uh, it means staying united in in all situation. It has a great value in all walks of life. When we are united, then we can um, surmount any challenge and accomplish any goal. The development of our society and country depends on the spirit of unity. So when we are unified, there are so many things that we are able to conquer and do together. Um, so let's say we are in, um, let's say one of you have a great idea that is ministry wise, mm -hmm. you know, it sounds like a great thing to do, but one of you in prayer and also not feeling that this is a move that we shouldn't make. One of you is more, more zealous. And the other one is saying, you know what, maybe we should, um, you know, we should, it sounds like a great idea and a wonderful thing, but I don't think it's the right time for us to do. The person that is so zealous needs to slow down and really consider the other person's um, uh, my, uh, mindset. Now, you may say that that other your your spouse is not the in the aggr aggressive person or decisive person. They're always the wanted to. They're not motivated. Whatever the case may be. But it's better for us to slow down and consider what the other person is saying, the mm -hmm. one that is quote unquote not the stronger one, because in that if you're demonstrating love as spoken in First Corinthians 13 um, that talks uh, for that talks about love is patient and love is long suffering. There's more power in obeying that principle, uniting with your loved one that may your your spouse that may not be as zealous as you and so when that person is is now maybe they need to be strengthened for the process but if we go ahead zealously there's more pain there's more heartache and more damage that we stand to happen even though what we're going going forward for it may be a good idea yeah matthew 18 and 19 tells us that um, again i say this is the english standard version if two of you agree about anything they ask, it will be done 
for you mm -hmm. by the Father in heaven. Yeah. And um, we got to look at what we're agreeing on, right? Sherilyn mentioned something which I believe is so principled. If we're agreeing on something that is not even God's will, mm -hmm. um, you're going you're gonna to see yourself face a, a difficult time. So it's important as, as a married couple that are believers to make sure that when you're, when you're looking to do stuff that you're going to agree on, make sure that it is the will of God. Now you say to me, Joel, how do I know um, if something is, is the will of God? Well, the will of God is always in the word of God. And so when we know the word of God, it's easy to determine whether we are coming together in agreement on something that is the will of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so, for example, is it God's will for you to prosper, be in good health as your soul prospers? Absolutely. So if Sherilyn and I decided that we wanted to build a business and we, um, and we were in full agreement that this is what we want to do, um, that is something that God can come behind because his word speaks about the fact that he wants to prosper us, right? If Sherilyn and I decided that we wanted to use our gifts to do what we're doing exactly here right now, is that something that God could come behind? Absolutely, because that's part of God's will that we use our gifts and, uh, and our talent, right, to help uh, empower others, right? If Sherilyn and I decided that, you know, we wanted to spend the rest of our life um, hurting people and destroying people, you know what, to some degree, we'll get some success because we're unified. And uh, uh, God won't bless us, but the enemy will certainly use our unity in doing evil to get evil done. So you got to decide what is it that you want out of your life. And then you got to decide that, you know what, we need to be unified around it. There, There is no... There is no, it, it's crazy to me that two people would get into marriage and then spend the rest of their lives fighting one another. Mm -hmm. And we see this all the time. And Sherilyn started this conversation um, talking about couples that like, it's like a badge of honor to, to, to talk about how um, they don't agree with their spouse. Why? Why would you invest years of your life into someone else's life and then spend those years in disunity. Spend those years fighting one another. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Hurt people hurt people. And a lot of times in this relationship, we have to come with a, um, with a, come to realization that, you know what? When we were fighting, because this was Joel and myself, you know, we weren't unified on the, the, some other places in our lives because we were actually hurting. You know, there was a fear that was existing um, between us, me. I had certain fears. Joel had certain fears based on certain insecurities, based on traumas. And so because of those fears, it, ha it, it, it came from traumas. So trauma produces the fear in us, and then we were hurt, and and we we were we were actually um, doing this so that we we were we were trying we were doing this separation thing to each other, thinking that we're protecting ourselves, but we were so hurt. And I would I start off by saying that we we we, we deal with our pains in three ways. We either medicate it, so you have people in relationship they're hurt, and every time they don't fight back. You know, you know, there's husbands that you know their wives are complaining about different things, and they feel that they're inadequate in order to lead, or they feel that you know she doesn't believe in them, she don't get the support or whatever, or even before that he didn't think he he she he deserve her. So to deal with his pain, he drinks. You know, you get to get beers and drink, 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 or alcohol, drink, drink, drink. Always have parties or things together so you can drink and meditate his pain, medicate his pain. And vice versa with women, they all oh, I need my glass of wine and they medicate, medicate, medicate. And, you and know, some some medication can be other things like yeah. pornography. Yeah, pornography is another medication. You know, that's that's medication. There's so many forms of medication. Um, some people eat. Some people binge eat. Um, you know, that's medication. Some people eat their way, mm -hmm. you know, to their grave and never really face the fact that, you know, we have a real problem. Right. 
So basically, one, dealing our pain with our pain will be the primary thing first because it's the reason why we are constantly fighting and not wanting to get to know one another. The second way we deal with our pain is by motivating it. You'll find a lot of couples, they motivate their pain by, you know, they don't want to sit down long enough for anything to to come into their for them to think about right. the pain or dissatisfaction or the fact that they can't communicate or do not know how to communicate with their spouse or express themselves in the relationship they just start to get busy so they're always having a project always helping people outside the house always having entertaining people in their house always busy with the children always have unfinished chores inside the home sometimes you have men that you know they're just have a project where they're building a car away from their wife and they call her the war department so they become very busy doing things outside of the home um helping others and sometimes it could be the person could be doing it in the church you know they don't want to be home and they feel like you know what i'm going to go and help out in the community and start a program you know outside of the home you know so there's it's issues where you have husbands because they don't feel inadequate because they don't feel uh, respected in a home or they feel inadequate or they're not you know whatever fears or insecurities that pain that they're dealing with they rather go into community programs and help people out there within the community and they while their family who needs their help the most is not getting it mm -hmm. and so it causes a rift when we're not dealing with our pain properly and this is why I was sorry to say because of pain that people are experiencing that's one of the reasons why they don't want to unify on different things mm -hmm. and it's find it hard to uni unify because they're hurting the last way people um, deal with their pains is meditating and meditating is the most dangerous one but also another popular one that's re that is responsible for a lot of depression anxiety um, you know sicknesses unexplained illnesses uh, mental um, breakdowns um, you know, uh, even lead, leading in, even into using drugs, mm -hmm. you know, because they get addicted to whatever medication for the pain that they go to their doctor and have no explanation for. Also, it can lead to abuse. And it could be exactly. Those right. are the words. Abuse. You know, because they're there quietly, not talking. They're just meditating on their pain, and and these are the, the they become vicious. These these people plan. They they meditate on things to plan, and um, they're revengeful. Uh, they could be secretly jealous of their spouse, and they do revengeful things. You know, they're very very dangerous in that they manipulate and they try to control. And uh, these are the this is like the worst way you could be be dealing with your pain because eventually. You know, you have people um, uh, abusing their spouse as well. They they right. just flip, you and, know, and 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 so you know these are the things that avoid or or they become a a, a wedge between us, preventing us from being able to unify. unify. And um and we we don't feel like we can trust. Mm -hmm. um, we don't feel like we can trust. Um, we don't trust God, and of course we don't feel like we can trust the person that we're with. And so it's important for us to understand um, the purpose of us being together. And Sherilyn and I always talk about the fact that we as married people need to understand that we're partnering with God to help God um, with our spouse becoming all that God wants them to become. And once we both understand that, um, it's easier for us to submit to the process. It's easier, easier for us to submit to that process. Um, that can take years. Mm -hmm. I know for us that took years for me um, to get to a place where I was fully submitted to the process, knowing that, you know, Sherilyn is mature enough and Sherilyn understands that, you know, if I become vulnerable with her about areas that I was inadequate in, that she would actually support me and help me um, to become better in that area or highlight things to me that can be a resource for me becoming better. Um, but to be honest with you, it was more natural for me to worry about the fact that she'll either exploit the fact that I'm weak or vulnerable in this area or that um, when I show my vulnerability in, in those areas, that um you know she wasn't mature enough to handle it that she was going to hurt me 
yeah. um, somehow, or she was going to see me as weak or, you know, not capable somehow. So because of those things, we we stay away from <laughs> we stay away from unity. And of course, all of this stuff is fear based, mm -hmm. right? All of these behaviors are, are basically hinged on fear. And um, it takes, it does take time for us to get to that place where we realize that, you know, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So, so once we're operating in fear, it's going to um, put a big wall up in between us becoming unified and getting to that place. So, now, some of the, the well, sorry, before you go into the benefits, some of the greatest enemy, uh, one of the greatest enemy, I believe, to unity is actually the spirit of offense. Mm -hmm. um, the spirit of offense has gotten a lot of us um, mm -hmm. on time and time again. You know, um, scripture tells us in Proverbs eighteen nineteen, a brother, brother or sister offended is mm -hmm. harder to be won than a strong city and their contentions are like the bars of a castle mm. imagine trying to get to a person the bars of a castle you can't you really there's so many castles that have been standing and they're they're bars you know you can't go through a bar you know parts of it might, may break down but the bars are strong so imagine how strong it is that offense keeps that person, the, 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 the other spouse out when you're offended. And um, one of the things I've learned through our process is, um, is Psalm, I thought I put it down here, Psalm 119, 165, that says that um, great peace have they that love thy law, the laws of God, mm -hmm. and nothing shall offend them. And so I, it, it reminded me when I was going through the, when I would be easily offended by things that Joel would say. One thing is that I put too much trust and expectation in my husband. And I think that when spouses uh, put too much expectations and um, trust in, their, in one another, they're making that person a god. And, you know, now I'm not saying that you don't care and love, like we, we did a talk about this last week. You could go on, um, and, and watch that video. But... Um, Basically, what we want to make sure is that we are not putting such a responsibility on our spouse, but we are being disciplined mm -hmm. ourselves to 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 deal with what what comes in and out of us or how we deal with it. And one of the best ways is the word of God, as it says here, great peace, great peace have they that love the laws of God and nothing by any means shall offend them. Now, when I was understanding the word of God as it pertained to our relationship, for example, if Joel did something, for example, he said something that was mean. Well, he never really said anything mean, but um, I'm trying to think of something I that never you did. Do. I'm not mean. I guess maybe I, I didn't take a lot of offense, but the you know, let's say in in, in relationship, some people, um, a woman might take it, take it offended, uh, offense if the husband decide to tell a child, uh, the, their son or daughter, to do something, and they don't really agree it, agree it. They take it personal to themselves and they get offended, and they may at that point combat their husband, which again, uh, pr promotes disunity in a decision that he made. It disrespects him. And then it shows the children that there's no stability here. You know, um, you know, mom and dad are not on the same page. So I could, who, 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 based on that stance, if it was in their favor, they know they're going to build uh, an ally with dad so they can always get their way, i.e. using manipulation. So the offense we got to be careful because the offense is a great way to create wedges in our relationship and so we have to be able to handle ourselves in a way that you know what he did something that made you feel a certain way like he, he cut you out of the decision making and you didn't really agree so you let it go and then you find a good time when that is done and you have a conversation about it you know, you talk about it. And, uh, you know, if the if the person is not uh, apologizing, again, we have talks that talks about po apology languages. If they're not apologizing in the way that you would like to be apologized to, find out what your apology language is, and theirs is, and maybe you guys should take the test. 
um, to, 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 so that, you know, you could explain to them, you know what, this is what I'm looking for, restitution, the fact that you know that you did something and you're going to do something about it, you know, um, but that's going into a different uh, conversation, but there's so much, so much layers to uh, being in unity and how offense affects us. And we have to make sure that we are constantly growing as individuals. And the word of God is the best place to learn about behavior, attitude, how to love one another, you know, how not to be offended. You know, you could wait, read Proverbs and there's so much wisdom in, our, in how we should behave. Ecclesiastes, Psalms, and how ways we, we deal with things, you know, so that things won't offend us every every minute and every second and so when we fill ourselves with the laws of God we realize which is the word of God we realize that a lot of things don't offend us because again we're not going to put our spouse in that place of God you know you're going to trust God his word and you're just going to love being patient to your your spouse being kind to your spouse and choosing not to get keep record of wrong but uh, also finding effective ways to communicate with them so they could hear your heart in the situation. Um, I wrote here, offense keeps us in, the, in our own prison with us as a guard to that prison. So we want to make sure that we're not being easily offended because we could tend to go go let it fester. And if we're if we're offended, if we deal with our pain like meditating, then we end up going to be doing something evil to our spouse. If we are um, motivating our spouse, then we're going to do activities that continue to keep our spouse away from us. I.e., um, you know, diminishing uh, intimacy because we won't be communicating. We're not tolerating one another. We cannot come together to do any common goals and then we're going to have that intimacy breakdown in our relationship and then of course if we are medicating our problems we're not even going to be able to function to even um, get any solution to our problems absolutely absolutely so some of the benefits of um, staying unified um, or having a marriage with unity is um, you'll find that um, you will have intimacy growing mm -hmm. in your relationship one of the one of the benefits of 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 unity is growing in your intimacy um, because what you're building is you're building um, consistency mm -hmm. in the relationship. Everything that Sherilyn and I have communicated on, and we are we agree that this is the way we're going to operate. Um, it was something that was a discovery process for us. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Every time we ran into a problem or a new situation that we've never faced before, um, it always caught us by surprise. And we had to kind of like slow down and figure out, okay, how do we walk this one through? Mm -hmm. And then we had to have a discussion afterwards. <laughs> like, okay, that was new. We never faced, um, we never had to face our children sleeping over at somebody else's house. The first time it happened, or they asked for that to happen, um, they may have called me and say, hey, dad, can I sleep over at such and such? And then I had to make a wise choice. I had to I had to say, let me get back to you. Let me talk to your mom or whatever. But there are times when I made decisions um, where either our children called us or a pastor called to say, hey, can you help out with this? Or a friend called and say, hey, can you lend me some money? Whatever the situation was, what we had to learn for the very first time when something like that happened is if it never happened before hey let me get back to you on that i gotta talk to the wife or let me get back to you on that i gotta talk to my husband in the past we both i think glitched in this area where we went ahead and made a decision mm -hmm. that was kind of like offensive to the other person because for the first time we faced a situation and we didn't know what to do or how to make this um, happened the right way and we went ahead and made a decision without the other person so what we have to do is we have to always have a meeting <laughs> when something happens for the first time we have to always have a meeting and say hey what's your what's your thought process on this here's what happened or here's what we're facing now what's your thought process on this here's my thought process on this if this was to happen again uh, uh, or when this happens again how do we want to handle this and so for a while in our relationship, we spent tons and tons of uh, moments 
having these first experiences where we're saying, hey, here's a situation or scenario. How do we want to handle this? Mm -hmm. And we developed um, areas of agreement in every possible scenario that comes along about how we want to deal with something. And I think it's very tempting for many couples to like argue about things that they disagree on. Mm -hmm. But you got to realize that your whole marriage journey is a learning experience. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, it's nice and fun to have a good, nice argument and a great throwdown and a great brawl. But that's that's not helping you. So when something happens for the first time, you know, have give each other some space, some 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 room to grow. Give yeah. each other, show each other some grace the first time something happened but do have a conversation saying hey how do we want to handle this moving forward so that's something that we've um we've implemented um years ago when anything happened for the first time and what happened there for us is that we realized that that became a benefit to our uh, our agreement and it it gave us great intimacy anything anything that that takes away from stress and arguments and fights will build your, help you mm -hmm. build your intimacy. Mm -hmm. The more you talk and come into agreement and practice what you agree, it adds to building your intimacy. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the benefits of unity. Intimacy will be built, mm -hmm. right? Um, the second benefit of intimacy is a blessing from God. The second, uh, the second benefit of unity, sorry, is a blessing from God. See, God's blessings are always going to come on, 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 on unity, right? The commanded blessings on God will always fall on unity. Just from that one scripture where you know two or more can touch and agree on any, uh, uh, touch and agree on anything in the earth, right? God will will bless it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing. So God's blessings are a promise to any two people in unity and so that's another um that's another benefit that you want right and so Sherilyn and i realized that wow once we begin to operate like this in these different areas of our lives we'll find that god will show us favor in those areas and he never stopped doing that for us um along the way a third benefit that we've seen consistently about unity is well-adjusted children, right? Don't everyone want to have well-adjusted children? Don't we want to have children that don't have anxiety, right? Children that don't have panic attacks, children that um, don't manipulate, lie, um, and play games? Well, unity in parents or unity in the spouse will help you to develop um, well-adjusted children. And a lot of times what we do is we think that we got to work hard. Some of us in our parenting style, we think that we got to cuss, <laughs> we got to yell, um, we got to whoop them every day. But a lot of times all we got to do is get our life together. Amen. To be honest with you. Yeah, there's a lot of broken broken couples out there that are dealing with pains and trials. And a lot of times they know themselves that they're not angry with their children, but they're taking it out on the children. Or they're not really angry with their spouse, but they're taking it out on the spouse. Mm -hmm. So because we take, we take out our pain and frustration on those the closest to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all we got to do is get it together, <laughs> yeah. right? Get it together. And that is, I would tell you, probably 90% of the battle with raising um, well-adjusted, well-behaved children is get yourself together. Unify, right? Children, children, man, there's so much comfort in a, in a young child seeing his or her mom and dad on the same page and we've seen this happen so many times we even had parents that we counseled tell us man you know we finally got it together and our son said such and such to us the other day um in church you know you know here's a child and, and this is an exa a good example in my opinion here's a child that never seen his mom and dad um get up you know and read the Bible together or pray together or go to church together. And then finally he sees them, you know, um, talking about things of God, 
praying, trusting God, and then they actually got up and went to church together as a family. And they went out to eat one day, and the child was so excited about mom and dad working together and actually um, um, doing things like going to church together. And so we see the performance of children and the confidence of children and the behavior of children literally readjust itself from the parents just pretty much getting it together, right? Um, one of the, um, there was a period in our life where um, our daughter would wet her bed when we didn't have it together. Right. And what, why, 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 we, why are we here being able to talk to you guys about this and Joel making those outlines of the benefits of unity? Because we were, we were years dysfunctional. <laughs> we went through many heartache and brain headaches and frustration and feeling like we're um, fish on the water. Not, not fish, human on the water. Can't even breathe in the relationship wondering, my gosh, why is it so... I mean, so impossible. Why is he so impossible? Because we were doing so many things out of unity, not considering one another, not really seeing that we needed to work on ourselves individually, not understanding. We just wanted our way, our way all the time. And, um, you know, also making a lot of decisions without the other because we figured that, you know what, I've been independent my whole life. I've been making decisions myself and I'm capable of making decisions. And so Joel, the same thing. So when we got together, we thought that we're, the benefit to us being together to move forward because we're, we're, our ability to make decisions on our own should be an asset. But that doesn't work when you come into a marriage. We have to both come together first and talk about things and make a united decision because a lot of our frustration and fight was then we, we ran a business and we were involved in a lot of things that involved people. And so when someone come to me, I figured, you know, okay. And I go ahead and I said, oh, okay, fine. And I make a decision and they're going with the decision. Joel has no idea that I did what I did or said. And some of these people, they were manipulative and selfish. So they went to him and they knew that I, he didn't, I didn't talk to, spoke, I haven't spoke to him because they would ask him something he don't know. So they're going to get something again from him. So not only children manipulate their parents that way, but it's a human thing. Mm -hmm. It's a fleshly thing. Um, so there's people that are going to be be using you and, and, and putting you against one another when you're not on the same page. And um, and so we had a lot of those. And then it created so much fights between Joel and myself, so much arguments and stress, you know, that was unnecessary. And it took away from our creativity to be able to put our strengths together to even go farther in whatever we were doing. So this is years of frustration of me making my own dec making decisions when it should have been our decision to so that we can be on the same page, page. Not only him giving an insight that I overlook or me giving him insight that he may have overlooked. And a lot of things, um, Joel was a type that didn't have a lot of discernment. He was very trusting to people. And it's not to say that I didn't believe in people but my discernment was very strong. So I would be around people and I would know their intent. I haven't met them before, but within their speech pattern and what they were saying, I knew their intent. It was a spiritual gift. And so, so it's, you know, some of you guys know that's as a spiritual gift of discernment. So it would be strong in me. And so when, whenever someone came to say something, I would say, I'd be like, mm, this is not a good idea. And here's Joel next to me saying, oh yeah, we can make this happen and so on. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not a good idea. But he never told them, you know what? You know what? That's a good, you know, that sounds good. You know what? Let me think about it. I'm going to run by my wife when we go home and we're going to get back to you on that. That's what that should look like. So they'll know that, you know what? We make decisions together. We don't make decisions rash. And it even gives us in, a, enough time to really ponder because we may not be in the best um, mm -hmm. of, of mo frame ability, of frame of mind, yeah, to give them a very good um, answer yeah. at that time. So it prevents a lot of heartache and stress. Absolutely, absolutely correct. Um, and you, you, you alluded to this, and, and that's the last point that I wanted to make, is that you know unity in your marriage protects you from external attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Unity in your marriage always protects you from um, external attacks because, like Sherilyn said, um, people are 
people are very discerning in a cunning way <laughs> and they know when there is an open door yeah right they know when your your relationship is vulnerable mm -hmm. and so unity uh, protects you from external attacks um, it protects you from external attacks in those what I would consider you know um, c scenarios that Sherilyn gave but they also um, protect you from external attacks when it comes to um, things like infidelity also you know um, you know I know many people where you know their relationship was on the rocks mm -hmm. and because it was on the rocks um, one of the main reasons why it was on the rocks is that they weren't unified at home yeah. Yeah. And so a guy or, or a young lady goes to work, the normal no, normal day at work, and um, because things are unstable at home, um, you give off that vibe to other people that you're not okay. And and you know what? One one conversation by <laughs> by the coffee machine about hey, are you okay? What's going on? You don't seem to be yourself. And uh, this guy or, or young woman that looks like they have more compatibility with you when you're in down. In fact, sometimes they don't. They just know how to That's to what hunt. I'm saying. They look <laughs> like they have more compatibility with you because they've already picked up. They, they, they've been hunting you for weeks. They knew that something was off. And they watched the consistency in um in your demeanor and they know that something is wrong maybe at home and so they've been studying you the bible talks about um the snare of the fowler and the snare is a trap and a fowler is a skilled hunter so whenever you have disunity in marriages and there's something that's off and there's an open door in your relationship the fowler begins to hunt and the fowler, the way they hunt is sometimes they, they do their hunting for weeks and months. And when they're doing that, what they're looking for is they're looking for any area of discrepancy in your life that they can begin to exploit that area of discrepancy. And so when you have this unity in a relationship, it's a big open door for, um, for fowlers. To hunt your relationship mm -hmm. and so a lot of um, infidelity and cheating begins from someone that is a fowler exploiting the fact that you have a crink in your armor a crink in your armor because you're dis you, 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 because of the disunity in the relationship and so many of us um, experienced that you came under external attacks and the only reason you came on the external attacks is because you weren't unified in the relationship at home. Mm -hmm. Unity is a serious thing. If you guys are not unified even about your sex life, that's a big problem. And, and, and a lot of, it's amazing that a lot of uh, marriages, this is an area that they take for granted. We take for granted that, hmm, you don't understand me, you don't know me, um, you know, you always bother me, for this and and the, and the guy just you know he gets offended by his wife saying well you're bothering me for sex or the or the wife gets offended you know by his needs you got to learn each other's needs you got to learn about one another and and agree on how you approach every aspect of life and sex is an important aspect of a marriage life and so if you guys are not in agreement about how you meet each other's needs when it comes to your emotional health, when it comes to your sex health, when it comes to your uh, 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 how do you speak to me based on my personality, how do you apologize to me based on my apology languages, how do we handle money because we all view money differently. There are so many facets to relationships that we take for granted and we don't get united around them and then the fowlers out there, they exploit those things because they are strong spiritually too. There are, there are people out there with, with, with the gift of knowledge and the gift of discernment that don't need you to tell them a word about what you're going through. And they're using their spiritual gifts for evil. They're the Jezebels out there. Right? They're the hustlers out there. 
and they sit around with their spiritual gifts and they look at you long enough and they can read you like a book. Oh, well, they don't only. Mm-hmm. They are skilled hunt to ask questions. So there's a lot of people mm-hmm. that ask questions about different things and they show um, intent, um, interest. interest and concern for you. They're very caring. They're gathering information. That's one thing about a uh, follower for years. It may take that they're gathering as much information um, from you, what your favorite um, food, what you, your desires are, your dreams are and they would actually plan and bring those things for you so everything that um, your spouse is at home is not doing uh, like asking questions that's why one of the most Im- one of the important laws in marriage of marriage is the law of pursuit which is getting to know one another here it is this person outside of the marriage is intentively uh, studying you gathering information from you and you're willingly given to them because there is no there is no um, offense there you know that person has not done anything to you but just create an atmosphere where you can come and just start giving all your information to they find out about your children they know your children's name their birthdays they bring birthday presents for your children they're much more attentive to the things that you you um you about you and you spouse. desire mm-hmm. and um they're just really gathering and, and giving you that um that uh building that uh, around you and then all of a sudden you're gonna be like oh my gosh well this person seemed to care maybe me and my wife or husband is not compatible. Maybe this person was what God intended for me. And then that's where, you know, the trap has been set for you. And then all of a sudden you can't really, you can't really escape it. One of the things I wanted to talk to before we go, Joel, so we're winding down. Um, one of the points is that I wrote down, it says that where there is unity, there is love. You know, um, when we strive to cultivate, especially in a marriage, in a, in a Christian godly marriage, um, where, where there is unity, there is love. When we strive to cultivate unity and maintain it, we find ourselves obeying certain disciplines in order to al- allow to um, always produce peace in every part of our life. Mm. Now, there's peace that is produced when uni- unity is created, um, when you're unified on everything in your in your marriage. And um, there are certain disciplines that you're going to be exercising. Again, where the word of God is concerned, once you're disciplining yourself on the way of how you should conduct yourself based on the word of God, you will always be at peace. And you'll always be in a place where you're trying to create peace. I uh, wonder things I knew when Joel would try to fight <laughs> when we were having the times he would always get offended and so on and so forth. Now, even if whatever is happening, one of the things my goal was always to create peace. I didn't want to fight. Um, he was always that way before, and I wasn't fighting. I just had a very um, explosive personality, and he found, found that to be offensive, so he was trying to keep peace alive. We had the perfect storm. Yeah, and so, you know, when he started exploding, I would try work on creating peace. And so the scripture tells us that uh, blessed are the, the uh, I'm sorry. Blessed are the children. Blessed are the peacemakers in uh, Matthew. But they shall be called the children of God. Right in Matthew, it tells us. It says, "Blessed are um, five nine. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the, the children of God or the sons of God." And um, so, when you're when you're constantly trying to create peace. Uh, this is what what is going to prevent a lot of fights or argument or prevent you from even getting offended because you're going to try to remember the word of God, which is discipline is remembering. You're going to try to remember what God's word said. Do not be easily offended. A person that is easily angered, you know, doesn't produce anything good. You know, I must forgive though, though that those word cut um, heavy. I'll forgive so that my father in heaven will forgive me. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if my husband is spitefully or my wife is spitefully um, misusing me because they're dealing with this the med- meditating on their pain and they're getting back at me then I know for sure now you know what I'll pray for them you know um, I'll be kind I'll still be doing all these different things as that um, the Word of God say and this is a great opportunity in creating peace one of the best way to create peace in your marriage is basically um, 1 Corinthians 13 4 to 7 you know you want to be patient you want to work on being kind you want to measure yourself against you know am I being envious at this point am I being boastful am I being prideful because the, the scripture tells us 
that those who are prideful, you know, always want to get your way, always want to be self-righteous, always want to prove in your point, then you are operating in pride. And what happens is the scripture tells us that God resists the proud, but he shows grace um, to the humble. And, you know, am I being dishonoring? He says, because love, love does not dishonor. So am I being dishonoring to my husband or my wife? Mm -hmm. Am I being self-seeking? If everything has to be around, surrounded by me, I always have to be right. You know, I'm always the victim in a situation. Am I introspecting myself? And is this particular behavior, why am I offended here? Am I self-seeking to, to, to be the, the, to have the upper hand? You know, um, am I easily angered if when my spouse express something or bring something up to me, am I just quick to fly off the handle and say, oh, you know, this is me and this is how I am and I'm not going to change and you're carrying on. And that those things are so embarrassing in the eyes of God, God because he knows that he created you to be even more than you are. And what you're doing is being a co-conspirator with the enemy against your own success and the success of your family. You know, am I keeping record of wrong? I mean, this is something tough for most of us when we're in marriages because, you know, you're always looking uh, for your spouse to be able to create this pattern of security uh, in, in the marriage where you know that, you know what, you know, this, this everything is working well. But um, creating this security, it takes time. It takes years. It's something that we're constantly both having to be giving to one another, serving one another, meeting each other's needs in the area of the need of that person. We're not trying to, I'm not trying to meet Joel's need like it's mine. So Joel has a need for respect. I'm not going to be um, trying to meet him, his need for creating security for him because that's my need. Um, you know, am I, you know, love always protect. Am I protecting my the heart of my spouse? Am I protecting their, their, um, their emotion? Am I protecting their self-image? Am I protecting their, their, um, their look to others? What's that word? You know, their am I image. their image? You know, so in front of, in 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 the eyes of our children, my husband is he has to be able to discipline them and love them, and I want them to respect their their father. So if I am not protecting the image of who he is as their father, as the leader of the home, to be respected and honored, so that when he's disciplining them or loving them, it's something that you know is recept received by them um, wonderfully. If I'm disrespectful to him, dishonor him, and not protecting him um, and uh, uh, you know he might be doing something that will not if our children find out it will be t devastating to his character I don't talk about those things in con conversation and yelling at him and this type of stuff you know uh, we see uh, couples throwing their or dirty laundry at each other in front of their children so the children know that daddy went step out on mommy and or mommy did so and so because they're constantly throwing it at each other they're not protecting one another love always trusts so the um the bible the, the, this is a, i probably got an niv version this one says trust but it's the find the scripture for me the one um the new king james version hopes. for this always hopes um it's not trust there it's hope um, love always hope. You always have the hope that things will be better. Mm -hmm. And hope comes from perseverance. You know, we have to persevere. There's a process that has you have to go through that always that that brings about this hope in you. So yes, you you, you know, there may have been a broken trust in the relationship, but you always have that hope as you trust in God that everything will be better and your marriage will be that dream marriage. You'll always have that hope that that's there, um, that that's possible. So with that hope, you'll always do it. Still look for it for me. Um, love always persevere. You know, we always want to persevere. So even though we're having a tough time, don't give up on each other. You know, consistently pray for each other, fast for one another, because there's so many generational things that are against both of you. And you came into that marriage with probably soul ties and, and spirit spouses and all kinds of generational curses that you're now levying one another and it's working against you and you're unaware of it. But prayer and fasting helps to break yokes and bondages and, you know, um, set the captives free as um, Isaiah 58 talks about the purpose for fasting. And so we want to make sure that we are always persevering um, by, you know, doing these things 
for our our spouse. So you found it for me. Believes all things. So in 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 space of trust, it says love always believes all things. And so you want you know what you don't you don't you want to always believe that believe in your spouse. So one of the things that you know, I mean, you might not believe your spouse, but you want to believe in them. Believe in the fact that God created them to be better than how they are at that point Absolutely. and you believe them into that process so i know it's been a while but i just want to let you guys know that unity where there's unity there's love and love is an action step it's a process and that it's very very possible you know when we are when we are obeying the word of god like like it says there it says you know um if you're not easy offended let's see where it is where it is psalm 119 165 Psalm 119, 65 says, Great peace have they that love thy law. The law is of God, as in example, 1 Corinthians uh, 13 and 4. Great peace have they that love the law, the laws of God, and nothing by any means shall offend them. So we want to mi minimize or get rid of the, the spirit, not minimize, get rid of the spirit of offense in our marriages so that we're able to communicate and unite with one another. Absolutely. It's, a, it's, it's so cool that when we're driving down the road in whatever country you live in because i know there's people here from multiple countries but whatever side of the road they say you should drive on in that country you drive on that side of the road and everyone drives on that side of the road and there is no um there are no heart palpitations when everybody <laughs> follow the laws of the land right and there's no offense meaning accidents right when everyone follow the rules and they're driving on the right side of the road and they are in their lane mm -hmm. but the moment when we decide to live by different rules or different laws um that's when offense begins to happen and that's when inconsistencies happen um that cause trust to be broken and that cause us to have anxiety and like Sherilyn says there's no peace right the Bible tells us great peace have they that love thy laws and nothing shall by any means offend them. And um, when we all live by the laws of God, um, we, we, we find great peace in that process. And, we, and, we, and there's a lack of offense. Just like when you drive on the right side of the road in your country and everybody does the same thing. Um, there is great peace in seeing everyone being very consistent because everyone is living by the same rules. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happens in marriages. You know, as we learn to walk in unity and live by the same rules, um, we experience peace in our relationship and we realize that there's less and less offenses that happen. And of course, we gain um, the benefits of intimacy, the blessings of God, well-adjusted children and of course protection from external attacks um, because we are in unity amen? amen so we hope that tonight um you know there was some type of uh benefit from jumping on here and spending about a whole hour with us over an hour over an hour <laughs> right we hope that um you gain something from it if you like what you heard share it please and um, we definitely appreciate it. And comment you back guys. down below. Um, what do you guys think about it? Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Great, great to see you, Michelle, Marlene. Thank you for joining us and always having great questions. Ezra, God bless you. Um, Phil Simpson, we love you, Coach. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of you here. Adriana, um, Josh, how are you guys? Thank you for joining us. Uh, Joanna, Joanna Marie, thank you for joining us. Roxy and Honeycomb, guys, thank you for joining us. We bless you and we thank you um, for joining us. We hope that you will share the message with any couples that you know are going through challenges because this is why we're here, so we can help one another grow as a community in Christ and so um, and developing that culture, uh, that Christ culture within our marriages mm -hmm. so we can say, we love you too, Odish and Claude. How are you? Congratulations to... Um, is it Odin that were, won the World Series today? <laughs> the, the uh, World the, Series. Wow. Well, he did well, big I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not the World Series. It's the um, what is the football one? Uh, yeah, he won the Super Bowl. <laughs> anyway, guys, let's pray, pray us out now. 
Holy Father, um, Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you that you are holy. As you are holy, your word says you are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you've done for your children are on all you will, you are well, well able and willing to do for us. That your word will never return to you void, but it must accomplish what it was set forth because your word is forever settled in heaven. We thank you for sending your word to dwell among us, to deliver us from our own destruction. Your word that became life in the person of Jesus Christ that paid the ultimate price so that we may not live in sin and that we will be delivered from our sins and that we could ask for forgiveness and know that we will be forgiven when we repent. Yes. So we thank you, Father God, for forgiving each and every one of us that has listened to this message and felt that, you know what, we fell short and we may have um, uh, operated in unforgiveness or did not know your laws and your word and um, we have violated and we have hurt one another. Father God, we ask your forgiveness and your word said that when we ask for forgiveness that you're faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and all means all and also not only that but forgive us of all unrighteousness and so Father God though our word sin was as red as crimson you are able to make it as white as snow yeah. so I thank you for forgiving each and every one of your children today as we begin to confess our sins one to another as couples talk to one another and um, commune I thank you that the spirit of offense has been rejected out of their life we bind the spirit of reject and command to get up and out of the lives of your children today in Jesus name because your word said that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven we thank you father God that we lose the spirit of unity yes. in them and that they overwhelm them with love that they will be patient with one another that they will not be boastful or or prideful but they will be kind to one another and they will not keep record of wrong but always persevering always hoping always believing and trusting in that your word will never return to you void, but it will manifest itself in their lives, that you remember your plans for them and their marriage and them, them individually and their children. Plans to do them good and not to do them evil. Yeah. Plans for a bright and successful future in that success is not only health and wealth, but is the success is in their, their joy, joy everlasting and un, unstoppable joy and a peace that surpasses all natural understanding. As we bring our word, the word to you, I pray, Lord God, that any person that is suffering from anxiety I bind the spirit of anxiety stress depression oppression in the name of Jesus and command it to get up and out of the lives of your children in the name of Jesus name right now spirit of oppression you no longer will oppress the, the children of God spirit of heaviness we command you to get out of the children of God right now in the name of Jesus and so father God we thank you that you will fill them with the spirit of purity, give them the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of, of um, wisdom yes. to overwhelm them, Lord God. Give them insight that, oh, as only you can. And for those who do not now have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, that they will have an encounter, Lord God, and that they will seek after spiritual things. They seek spiritual understanding and seek a relationship with Holy Spirit, the perfect gift that Jesus, you sent forth so that we will be able to walk this life successfully yes, because we cannot yes. do it by ourselves we have to do with you and you did not Jesus you told your disciples it was good that you go away so that the Holy Spirit our helper our guide our counselor could come forth and help us father God today I pray that the blinders of uh, are broken off the eyes of your children that they will receive hope that they're not alone and that you have sent them the Holy Spirit to guide them and teach them and if they don't know the Holy Spirit I pray that they will receive the 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 um, um, counsel and the personal uh, uh, in relationship of the Holy Spirit in their lives today. Yes. Holy Spirit, come into every heart and every home that right now is asking to receive you because your word said if we ask, we shall receive. When we seek, we will find. When we knock, the doors will be open. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, we call for the Holy Spirit fire to burn and break down every barrier in the homes of these people, Lord God, and bring revival and renewal and joy and peace and protection as promised in the word of the living Thank God. You, Father God, we pray on, you said, having done all to stand, pray on the full armor. So we pray on the full armor uh, uh, so on your people today so that they'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil in these evil days. And so the helmet of salvation, we pray on their heads. Breastplate of righteousness, we pray around their waist, the belt of truth and on their feet, the readiness of the gospel of peace sandals. We pray on the shield of faith that is able to quench the fiery dark 
darts of the enemy and the word, a sword of the spirit, which is the word of the living God. You also said that you would give your angels charges over them to bear them up lest they dash their foot against the stone. So I pray for that for them and their children. Thank you, Father. you said many are the affliction of the righteous, but you would deliver them from them all. So no matter whatever circumstances, whether it be um, financial, whether it be their jobs, whether it be their health, whether it be any courts, court situation, Lord Jesus, I thank you that whatever the trial right now, Lord God, you will deliver them in the name of Jesus you, Christ. Lord. I also pray that if they have children that's going through any uh, uh, oppressive situation or addiction or any form of backsliding or backwardness, Lord God, we pray off, bind and cancel the spirit of addiction. We cancel the spirit of, of uh, backwardness and anti-progress off of the life in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that your word says, though hand join in hand, the wicked will not go unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I thank you, Lord God, that those who may depart, their children may seem to be going uh, by the wayside, that you said that they, they, as they raise their children up, when they get older, they will not depart from it. So I thank you, Lord God, that they will remember the word that was planted in their hearts from when they were children. Lord, we give you glory and honor and we thank you that no weapons form against your people and their families and their relationship and their hearts and their minds will prosper and every tongue that rises up against them in in judgment we condemn now in jesus mighty name amen amen amen, amen. we love you guys thanks for joining us we look forward to talking to you soon you guys have a blessed week um for those of you that are experiencing cold weather stay warm <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Have a Love good one. Love you guys. Good night.